I'd just like to thank everyone for being here today. Um, we've got people coming from all over the place, from the Lake District, from Tyneside, and it just means so much for us both to have the people we love and care about here. So just thank you. It wouldn't be the amazing day it's been without you all. So thank you all very much. And now, uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you for the amazing job you did in Raising Charlie. Um, <laughs> she wouldn't be the fantastic person she is today without you. And you've been so kind and welcoming to me. Um, I really couldn't have wished for you know, better than you. Thank you. Um, and I'm just really glad that it's official now. <laughs> um, I'd also like to say a big, a big thank you to Sean's uh, granddad, who I know is Granddad Ray. Um, he has also been, as, you know, as great as, as, as I could have hoped for. A brilliant figure to look up to, so thank you, Sean. <laughs> um, <laughs> Kindest, most loving mother anyone could ask for. Um, no matter what has happened, I know you're always there for me, so I'll always there for us, and I'll be eternally grateful. So I'd like you all to raise your glasses to love and care. Next on my list of thank yous. Uh, we have Ruth, who was Charlene's maid of honour, um, and a bridesmaid, Katie, Imogen, Edwin, and Trinity. Now, Charlene was uh, Ruth's maid of honour only a month ago, so I know exactly how much effort went through. Um, um, yeah, so thank you, Ruth, for making sure that. <laughs> and as for the bridesmaids, I'm sure you'll all agree um, with me that they all look beautiful today and did their job fantastically. So, yeah. Yeah. to Ruth, Katie, Imogen, Trinity, and Esmeen, for the bridesmaids. <laughs> I really don't know what's coming up with the best man speech, so I'm going to get my preemptive strike in first. As you know, I've got two, two best men here today, um, George and Mike. Oh, and I'd like you to thank, uh, to keep, uh, thank you to keep keeping up with the tradition of not looking as good as the crew. <laughs> 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 right, so this, this gigantic hero is my nephew, George. And George has been coming out with me and Mike since he was about 14. And I remember it buying him his first point of shampoo. was <laughs>
from being a massive girl's blouse. <laughs> so she was top lady. I'm the one I'm very nice to So, thank you. And uh, this leads me on. <laughs> so much, much older brother, Mike. <laughs> That's some great times over the years. And what's not as good at the old man? So you're not at Old Trafford. Lads, lads be tender way. <laughs> Anyone knows Mike will tell you that I could stand here all night telling stories about his antics. But possibly my favourite is one day we've been to watch Oxford at the Sam, and it was his work to do, so we had a free bar. And afterwards, we went back to the Bull Nose. Uh, it was a bit worse for wear, so we put him in a taxi. Thinking that was the end of it, we got back inside to find him playing on a free bar. <laughs> We've had some fantastic time together, and I'll never forget our holiday in paradise in Borneo, Central France, where I proposed to you on the beach and remain the happiest man in the world in doing so. And so much has happened since then. We've moved to Vista in our first house. Um, we've both got promotions at work, and it's been a lot of stress and long hours. But I know when I come home to you, all my problems might be Because just being with you is all that's important to me. Mm. So you're an am amazing, beautiful person. Okay, that's almost all done. Um, just a couple of, of little, little questions for people who have helped us with these days. Um, so thank you to Ruth and Dan for helping with the order of service. Great job you did. Um, Willem Fidelma, who made that fantastic post box over there. That's, that's a great job, well done. And to Alice and Tasha for all the fantastic cakes. So thank you. And um, before I pass over to George, <laughs> I'd like to ask you all to do me a really big favour. George is singing for us later. He's singing our first dance and he's singing a couple of songs afterwards. So I'd really like you all to get behind us and come and join us on the dance floor and show your support. So after after the first dance, if you all come come and have a big dance with us, that'd be great. So I'll pass you over to George. <laughs> George, I'm Matt and Charlene's little nephew. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> <14. I'll... laughs> 
and I'll be doing it, and I'll be doing this speech on behalf of myself and Mike. Um, can't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> not be. So I, as like all of you here, have been waiting for this day for a long, long time. Events like this come round so rarely, and I've been counting down the days to the event. To, um, to the event of the year. I am, of course, talking about Man United Liverpool, um, which is on now, so I'll try and keep this short. Um, is it still 2 0? Still 2 0. Right. I've, I've written in brackets there, wait for side splitting laughter, but knowing Charlene's love for football, I'll move on quickly. Um, I didn't really know where to start this speech, to be honest. Um, but I suppose the obvious place is with this absolute prat. <laughs> um, I've known Matty all my life, obviously. Uh, <laughs> We're not all one. Uh, which, will, uh, which will obviously come as a surprise to many of you. He is absolutely one of the funniest blokes that I, or I'm pretty sure I can say safely, anybody in this room will meet. No. <laughs> and he's... I mean, this is the sort of bloke who climbs to the top of the Castle Mound in Oxford <laughs> on a night out yeah. to get mobile phone signals. <laughs> 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 and nearly all, of, nearly all of the stories about him involve four things. Matty, me, Mike, and beer. <laughs> So, however, this is a family occasion. Uh, this is a family occasion, so I can't tell most of them. But a few of the more family friendly, <laughs> family friendly, oh, friendly ones that I'd like to give you an insight into what Charlene is getting herself into. I'm really sorry. Um, <laughs> such is the time that Matt, after a heavy night of drinking, fell off a stranger's garden wall after trying to dance along it, landing flat on his back in the flower in the flower beds, only to then be pursued by the neighbour who came out of the house in his pants and chased him down the street. <laughs> With Ginger Ritchie filming it. So, <laughs> We were playing, we were playing, Mike's son at the time was two years old and had a tiny little football. So we had some hard time entertainment by playing football in the living room. Yeah, Mike forgot that he wasn't actually Roy Keane, knocked Matt into the door handle and knocked him out cold for about half an hour. Uh, yeah. Or what about the time that Matty, along with several of, him, uh, several of his mates, including Mike, anybody else might have seen that pattern, um, <laughs> decided to get the entirety of the Abingdon Road shut off <laughs> by breaking the chip shop's plastic clock. <laughs> yeah, I can't really go any more into that one for the fear of killing my ground. I wanted to get the time to it. to apologise to Charlene, however, this was your decision. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm really trying to say, though, is that Matt is one of the funniest blokes I know, if not the funniest. He, and besides being as much of a prat as me and Mike, as well as being... <laughs> as well as being... <laughs> as well as being <laughs> Hardworking, decent, and the most fun uncle that a bloke can ask for. And I, for one, can't wait for the. Hang on, that's the wrong page. For the, <laughs> for the next time he falls off a wall, although judging by the state of his arm, I hope he leaves it a few weeks. Or forces riot police to shut off the Avenue Road. But, as they say, behind every great man is a great woman. And this is where we leave our drunken adventures and turn to one of the most down-to-earth, sensible and all-round all round well-natured people that I've ever met. And Matt, I think it's fair to say, couldn't have found anybody that could make him happier or supports him so much or that he could be as proud to support. I think it's quite amazing that although I'm only 21, I've known Auntie Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> so much as a cr
cross word out of her mouth, even when me, Matt, and Mike, particularly Mike, are being <laughs> A testament to this is the time last year, I can't believe I'm going to tell this, the time last year, just a few weeks after Matt and Charlene had moved in together, when Matt, Gav, Gav Bucket, and I decided to go out for a night out in Bicester. Being the lovely people they are, Matt and Charlene allowed us to stay over so we could drink long into the night. Something I'm sure they'll have regretted when, in my intoxicated state, I decided to feel ill over Charlene's brand new silk throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> me and Matt thought we were really, really, really clever when we managed to put it in the washing machine and after prodding the buttons for about half an hour, made it do something. <laughs> Standing there, pre uh, I've already said that, but um, whatever it did, it didn't clean Charlene's silk throat, as she found out the next morning. Matt's recollection of the conversation, I think, goes a little bit like this. Matt, was Georgie on my throat last night? No. Why did you say that? Because I found it in the washing machine. Yeah, it's clean, but it stinks. <laughs> Again, I'd like to apologise to Charlene. It was Matt Bol Matt's fault, I swear. <laughs> um, but back to my point. Not a single crossword was said, and I think that is a testament to Charlene's character that no matter what idiots we make of ourselves, which we do quite a lot, um, she never gets cross and always stays her lovely self, even when certain members of our family, Mike, um, <laughs> <laughs> but pat her on the head at Christmas and go, good girl, Trinity. Of course, <laughs> yeah. it's my six-year-old cousin. <laughs> yeah, she was about four at a time. <laughs> and he was she completely is. serious. Um, uh, that's not the first time that Charlene's age has been underestimated either. I'll always remember her walking through the park with my sister Alice, who was 11 at the time, and the boys in her year, who were also 11, <laughs> shouted very loudly to her, Oi, Alex, who's your mate? <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome Charlene into our family, although after 11 years, I think